Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 139. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name's Ellis Hughes. And my name's Patrick Ford. Thanks for stopping into TidyX. We're always glad to have you here. Uh, just a reminder, if you love what we're doing, like and subscribe on that YouTube channel. Drop the comments below. Questions. Uh, we do take questions and we do turn them into episodes. And so uh, we've, we've done a number of those over the past several weeks. Uh, additionally, if you like what we're doing, you feel like it's positively impacted you and you'd like to donate, we do have a Patreon page. We're always really uh, gracious for, for whatever um, uh, whatever you may be able to give. Yeah, exactly. So let's get yeah. going. So this week is not a viewer-based uh, question. This is actually something that we came up with all on our own. Wow. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Patrick, do you want to introduce the idea here? Yeah, so this was actually something I was uh, uh, working on, and I was like, okay, we, we can probably turn this into an episode because other people might be dealing with this. When you're building models, it's often pretty common to uh, scale the variables. Um, so, uh, you know, Z-score them or min-max scale them or, 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 you know, something like that. Um, and reason being, you don't want the really large variables to drown out the really small variables in some of these machining, machine learning models that can happen. Um, so we basically ran into a situation here where I was saying, you know what, I've got this data that's going to serve as a test set, but I want to scale the features to the parameters, the mean and standard deviation of the values in my training set. And um, I have lots of features and I have lots of different groupings of data. And so I needed to do this in a quick and handy way where I didn't want to have to sit there and type out, you know, something like 50 rows, one row per column, specifying all these things manually. So we're going to simulate a, um, a, a simple data set and we're going to walk you through the steps that I used to um to kind of solve this. And uh, we're going to start by doing this the wrong way. So these are, these are the steps that got me to where it didn't work. And then we'll go through the steps where I was like, oh, okay, if, if I do it like this, it actually works. And then Ellis is going to uh, take us through a way of building a function that's a little more general and can be applied to other data sets. So the, the, the solution that I come up with is very unique to the bespoke data set you're working with. Very so if you were going to apply... Yeah, if you were going to apply the correct function to your data, you just need to change the data frame and the variables so that it matches. Okay, so um, first step, we're going to build this uh, function. We're going to call this the bad Z score. It's the wrong. It doesn't work. And basically, what's going on in this function is the first thing we do is we pass it our variable of interest. This in this case x, and we're saying within the data set, I want to get the mean of x in only the instances that are less than 2023. So we're pretending like 2023 is our test set and we wanna scale all of the variables to mean and standard deviation of the years prior to 2023, the training set data. So we do that for the average and the standard deviation. And then we calculate our Z-score at the bottom, which is going to be X minus the average divided by the standard deviation. And we return that Z-score. So we run this function. And the first thing is I'm going to just check it. So I want to run that function over the data. And then I also want to run uh, this, this variable called scaled check, which is the ground truth. This is what I expect to get back because I'm explicitly saying, get the mean of the value when the year is less than 2023 20, and do the same for the standard deviation. So we go ahead and run this and it didn't work. Okay. So first, uh, first pass, I'm like, Hmm. What's going on? Okay. So I step back and I say, that didn't work. Let me just do this by hand and, uh, and see what, see what, um, see what happens. So I actually calculate the mean and standard deviation explicitly. And then I calculate the Z score scaled three. And I'm like, okay, that's what I should get. And that's what I see up above in the final column. So that's the ground truth. That's what I'm expecting to get back. What's going on here. So we go back to our, uh, back to our script. And okay, that looked correct. If I run it like this and I say, you know what? What if I remove the 2023 from my conditions in that scaled val function? I see what's happening. It's returning the Z score as if the 2023 data is within the mean and standard deviation calculations. Okay, that's a problem. Yeah. So 
here's how I solved it. I basically turned them into vectors. So I said, okay, function, you're going to take this variable X and that's going to be the value of interest. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the mean of X. And then I'm explicitly saying within our data set, dat dollar sign year, less than 2023. I do the same for the standard deviation and I get back to me that Z score. I'm going to calculate it the exact same way. So I run this. And if we run this along with our checked uh, column, so that's the ground truth. Boom. Voila. It worked. <laughs> hey, so, the correct answer. So <laughs> now in introducing the bigger problem, which is what if I had like a bunch of columns? Which, what if I have a hundred columns? Um, so we're going to make some data up here. We have three columns. We'll keep it simple. And they each have nine values or nine observations. And I'm going to do a uh, mutate across. So I'm basically going to solve this problem in three lines of code. I'm going to say across my values of one, two, and three run that z-score function. And then just for sanity purposes, um, because I get kind of crazy about these things, I always do this. I'll add a few columns in for sanity purposes to make sure that there's a, a check in there and, and it's correct. So if we go ahead and we run this, voila, we get the right um, We get the right. They're not values. next to each now, other. So when you look at these numbers, yeah, yeah. value one and then value yeah, one yeah. check, which is three over. Value I guess two, we could have done value a, two check three over. We, we didn't take the time to, uh, no, to, to no. re reorder everything. Uh, uh, no, but you um, can so, look and see pretty quickly that these these values yeah, are matching. They're matching. So, okay, we got what we wanted. We got what we expected. This works great if your data set is called DAT and your columns are called value one, value two, value three, and the conditional column is called year. So if I were to use this on a new data set, I would have to go up to my Z-score function and I'd have to just change things around to match the type of data set that... I, I need or the type of condition that I need to rely on. Um, Ellis, why don't you walk us through a solution that's a little bit more general for, uh, you know, maybe a, a more general data set? For sure. Yeah. So what, when I looked at this and Patrick kind of explained the idea, my first thought when I looked at this is, well, okay, so what you actually want to do is create a function that defines another function. So there's their generator functions that allow you to say, hey, I want to calculate the z-score based on these reference values, and then later on go actually calculate the z-score. So this is a pretty common technique that you'll use. It's a function factories is what other people also call them. So what I, what I did here is I defined this new function gen z-score func, so generate z-scores function very original um, it accepts three different arguments dat so the data set that you're going to be calculating your z-score across var meaning which variable do you want to be calculating this across and rows because in our, in our prior data set we wanted to do any any row that didn't have the year be 2023 but let's provide it in a more general way so let's just call it rows and say any any case where rows is true that's what we'll use uh, we calculate our A and our S values here, but we don't do anything with them yet. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new function that's going to be the output of our gen z-score func, and that's what actually cal calculates our z-score. It's going to take in X, so this will be a vector to calculate the z-score across. It's going to then subtract the average and divide it by standard deviation to give us our z-score, uh, assign that to z, and return it. And so this is not actually giving us a z-score. This is giving us a function that gives us a z-score based on the parameters that we created before. So this allows us to um, more generally define exactly what Patrick did, uh, but in a, a much more general state. So let's create that function. And so now what we do is we have z-score value 1, use gen z-score func. It's going to take in the dat uh, data set. It's going to be calculated across value 1. And the rows we're going to be using are any cases where dat year is less than 2023. Same idea for z-score or for z-score value 2 and z-score value 3. So let's run all those. And so now we've got three different functions for the z-scores. We're going to apply the same logic. Well, unfortunately, we can't use the across because we have three different functions. Um, so we have value 1, value 2, value 3 for our z-score funks. They take in value 1, value 2, value 3. Um, it seems very repetitious for this scenario, um, but again, it's just because it's a simple case. You could potentially, if you calculated a generic z-score um, that you wanted to be reusing, this would be a very easy way to do it. 
Um, so then you could, if you're recalculating something based on value one later on, it'd be very simple. And so now you can run that and you can quickly see that these values are, so value one z-score is this, mm -hmm. value and one check. check is this, they again match as expected. And so that is a more general way that you can approach building a function that defines a new function that actually gets run to to define it. There you go. The only thing we have left to say is probably in the first function, the one that didn't work, the bad one, the reason why it was returning an average and standard deviation that was inclusive of 2023, even though I was telling it to not include it, is because of the way this function is written. So it's taking an argument called X, which is the value of interest. And when we dump it into this function, it's actually evaluating X. So it doesn't know what to do with that filter year 2023 uh, uh, line of code that we have for the average and standard deviation. Mm, it's, it's just actually calculating this value here. You could basically, yeah. like, it is filtering down dat to be all the cases where year is less than 23 and then pulling out A. But this is still calculating it based on the vector you passed. It's yeah. not calculating it, oh, I'm supposed to be looking at the actual named value, or the, the unquoted expression, meaning the column name of dat that I want to be calculating it on. Yeah. It's yeah. thinking you want to be calculating it on the actual value that you passed. Yep. So it's a little little bit nuanced. There are ways to deal with it, but uh, that's it. we're not going to get into that. <laughs> yeah, no, but, that's right. Yeah. But that is how you can take an approach and apply z-scores and create your functions to make your life a little bit easier to um, apply later on. So with that, I think we're going to call it for episode 139 of TidyX. Thank you all for joining us for another episode. As always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick at Tidy underscore explained is where we both are. Tidy.explained at gmail.com is where you can drop us an email if you need to reach us. Um, other than that, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Comments, questions below. If you felt like this was useful, you know, writing, you know, kind of bespoke functions and for loops is, is sort of a, uh, that's kind of the name of the game in a lot of data engineering, data preparation stages before you start analyzing data. So if you want to start see more things like that, let us know. Tell us what you thought about it. If you have other questions or maybe Same troubles problems. and functions that you're trying to uh, to write. And, uh, and again, as always, uh, we, we do have a Patreon page. And if you feel like uh, uh, the work that we're doing has benefited you in some way and you'd like to donate, we're appreciative of whatever you'd uh, be willing to give. Yeah. Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world.